They've been out of their homes for a week today. Evacuees of the quarry fire are finally allowed to go back home. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kim Christensen. I'm Tom Green. Just in the last 40 minutes, the Jeffco Sheriff's Office now says they have the quarry fire 83% contained. That's almost double the containment that they said they had this morning. The amount of land burned still close to 600 acres, but there's only been a little growth in the last 24 hours. Nine News reporter Janelle Finch joins us from Jefferson County, where the roads are still closed as firefighters continue to work to contain the flames. Janelle? That's right, Tom and Kim. Like you said, Jefferson County homeowners are returning to their properties today. Some are unsure of what they're coming back to. Others had a little more insight and were even able to thank first responders with the help of technology. As quarry fire evacuations lifted, cars lined up to return home. Just crazy to see all the neighbors heading up. Tom Stonebreaker didn't hesitate. That is really close. To get back to the home he left Wednesday. We grabbed our stuff and headed up the hill. Eager to see the state of his property, but more invested. Can you guys hear us? In the state of his heroes. And this is Mike walking up. Like Grand County Fire Assistant Chief Mike Scott, he and Stonebreaker forged a friendship beyond the fire line. I really, really appreciate, you know, what you guys are doing. You're saving, you're, specifically, you're saving my house right now and, I, and a whole lot of others. The two spoke through his Ring doorbell camera, bonding over shared gratitude. The community and, and everyone that's already donated everything, I'm a, we're really blessed to have folks like yourself help us, so thank you so much. Stonebreaker knows the work of first responders allowed him to go home. God bless you. Virtual thank yous are just the start of expressing how much that means to him. If I've got to drive to Grand County to shake his hand, I'm, I'm going to shake his hand and thank him. All right, bye now. It's important to me to, you know, personally say thank you. Grand County Fire Protection says those moments really show firefighters that what they're doing makes a difference. After Tom finished talking to us, he was off to the grocery store to continue to show his appreciation to firefighters in the form of hot dogs. Live in Jefferson County, Janelle Finch, 9 News. From miles away, we see these stories as big stories about a lot of people, but it's also individuals, their particular homes, and those particular people brought in to fight them. It's a great look at, the, at that relationship, too. Absolutely, that it is. And again, to just make that person to person connection of just saying thanks really goes a long way. Great gratitude. All right. Thanks, Janelle. In Larimer County, firefighters have made some progress as well, holding the fire line, allowing no growth for the Alexander Mountain Fire since yesterday. It's just over 9,600 acres, but now it's 83% contained. Firefighters are focusing on the remaining hot spots. For more evacuation orders have also been lifted as well. Coming up in just a bit, Evan Krugel is going to tell us about a restaurant in Loveland that's doing everything it can to help the first responders on the fire. And rain. Yes, we're seeing some rain and some is coming right now, really helping those fire crews. There's a large dark cloud right now hanging over the city. Here is weather impact meteorologist Kathy Saban with the details. Wonderful news, Kim. A chance for rain tonight, tomorrow, and then Lots of rain coming in Thursday and Friday, but you also noticed in some of the live shots along the front range, these thunderstorms have wind that will keep fire managers on their toes. We're also watching for the potential for lightning, but we'll take every drop. These storms are tracking northwest to southeast. This cell is moving into Denver right now. Brief heavy downpour, likely a little bit of wind and lightning. No reports of hail as of yet, but if you're in the Lakewood area, Commerce City, probably a brief heavy downpour that way. And these are storms will continue to track overnight tonight and again tomorrow ahead of a big change on Thursday and Friday. I'll have the timing and impact of that coming up. Body camera video led Jefferson County prosecutors to drop an obstruction car charge against a man who was arrested after a bar fight. Now we can't show you the video because Ed Edgewater's police chief is not going to make it public. But as Kevin Vaughn from our Nine News Investigates team reports, it's the second time that same officer's actions have hampered the prosecution of a criminal case. I'm going to shoot you right now. Don't move. That's Edgewater police officer Paul Perez making an arrest last December. I'm going to blow your brains out if you move, you Don't 
This case had problems, evidence not collected, and body camera footage that alarmed Jeffco DA Alexis King. I was horrified. You did plead guilty here. That led to a plea deal. Pre-body camera footage. Uh, it, it was kind of assumed that the police officers were telling the truth and were giving an accurate recitation of what happened. Defense attorney Eric Faddis is a former prosecutor. That's no longer the assumption. Yeah, yes, sir! <laughs> Two days after that case, Perez responded to a bar fight at the American Legion Hall. Edgewater Police Chief Eric Sonstegard denied our request for the footage because it's part of a pending case. But documents obtained by Nine News Investigates lay out Perez's version of events. The main aggressor allegedly ignored him and had weapons nearby, a pocket knife, bottles, and a chair. The man advanced quickly and Perez shot him with a taser, then shoved him to avoid the situation from further escalating. The man fell, hitting his head. After seeing the footage, the DA dismissed a charge of obstructing police. Charges of criminal mischief, harassment, and trespassing are still pending. Still, Fattis says prosecutors have to ask themselves a question. Is this someone I want to put in front of a jury, uh, in, pr in front of the citizens of my community, and get behind this person? Chief Sonstegard disciplined Perez in these cases and tells us he's made it clear. This will not happen again. It will not be tolerated going forward. Jeffco DA Alexis King ordered a review of body camera footage in all cases the past two years in which Perez was an endorsed witness. In all, that's about 80 to 90 cases. At the same time, the DA is gonna be notifying defense attorneys in all Perez's pending and future cases about these incidents. In the studio, Kevin Vaughn, Nine News. And we continue to talk about the body camera. It continues to change a lot of what's happening in law enforcement and in court cases too. It's changed the equation. There's no longer a he said, she said situation when you have body cam footage that can sort out in many cases exactly what happened. The cameras and the mics. All right, thanks very much, Kevin. And that's the second Edgewater officer in trouble for use of force. The department's second in command, Melvin Berghahn, is named in a lawsuit out of the town of Elizabeth, where he used to be the chief of police. Nine News investigates discover the town agreed to a six-figure settlement for use of force two months before he left in 2022. You guys got to send three cops for a guy just trying to get his dog dealing with the Republican scumbag. This is body camera footage from former chief uh, Berg Hahn and uh, he and other officers responding to a call for a man trying to catch up with his loose dogs. After that political referen reference you just heard, the situation escalated quickly. Sean Page says he was wrongfully arrested and the police gave him a concussion and bruised ribs. The town agreed to pay him $150,000. He says he remains traumatized. I was not told I was being detained. I was not told I was under arrest. This, the chief of police just tackled me. Unrelated to this incident, the town planned to fire the chief later that year. The town sued Nine News to keep that secret. After he left Elizabeth, Edgewater police hired Burkhan. Well, now we know who's going to be running alongside Kamala Harris in the presidential election. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. That announcement came today, and then the pair were introduced for the first time as a ticket just over an hour ago at a rally in Philadelphia. Harris's campaign believing the 60-year-old Walz brings a sense of balance to the Democratic ticket. He's a two-term governor, a military veteran, a gun owner, and a former teacher. The Democratic National Convention now two weeks away. That, of course, when Harris will become the official nominee of the party.